I wanted to take a quick look together at some of the results from YCS Niagara today because there was no stream for it, unfortunately, but we do have some written coverage and we do have some people that already compiled some results, thankfully, and some people who also already posted some profiles so we can take a look at what happened. You know, like Rage of the Abyss out now, Snake Eyes getting support via the Azamina cards, new Fiendsmith card, does it see play? Are people main decking Fuvalos? All those kind of things. So we're going to take a look today at the top cut of YCS Niagara Falls, which had, I think, almost 900 players, 875. The first thing that I'm noticing when I'm looking at this top cut breakdown, and obviously I've already looked at this beforehand, but oh my god, yes, Sky Striker got second place in the hands of Ryan Yu, who unfortunately lost the finals to Fire King Snake Eyes Azamina, but uh, made it all the way into the finals with Sky Striker. So shout outs to Ryan. Honestly, I don't know how that's possible, but here we are. This is the list. Power spell, Sky Striker, going second, activate desires, activate some board breakers, activate engage, draw some cards, maybe go for the linkage OTK. Honestly, sounds very fun. And I'm really happy that it was able to perform in this format. Blind second, but no Fuvulos, no Perulia as well. I'm assuming because those are terrible cards to draw into. I don't think it's because Ryan didn't have access to the card. I'm pretty sure Ryan didn't play the card because he didn't want to play the card. But honestly, impressive performance with, with Sky Striker here not something i expected but it is um it is sick that it worked out but the elephant in the room if we take a look at the winning deck and also the overall top cut breakdown is obviously that snake eyes are back that is something that obviously everyone feared everyone expected it after the last forbidden and limited list people were already saying like yeah this will solve snake eye for a while but then once rage of the abyss drops snake eyes are going to be back and here they are with the most representation in top cut i don't think they have the entire breakdown but it was a minimum of seven snake eyes in top 32 and four fire kings in top 32 which are also snake eye variants now these are split between different versions some of them have been including fiendsmith cards some of them have not included fiendsmith cards the only thing that i think they all have in common is that they all include the azamina cards now because there is very little reason or there's no reason not to play the azamina cards in snake eyes of course we've already talked about in a previous YouTube video, how the Azamina cards impact the Snake Eye combos, but obviously they offer you more consistency and they offer you a way to negate your opponent's hand trap. So it's an obvious auto include in every single deck that has Snake Eyes. The only thing that you have to like realize is that it will take up some extra deck space because you have to include the Azamina fusions. And I think that is why not everyone is including the Fiendsmith cards anymore. If you want to include Fiendsmith and Azamina, I can only imagine your extra deck is incredibly tight which is why I think some people are foregoing it and I, why I personally would have also probably started testing without the Fiendsmith cards, but some people still did well with the Fiendsmiths. The deck that did the best and won the entire event is the Azamina Snake Eye Fire King variation. It was not the most represented deck in Top Cut. There was actually more pure Snake Eyes than, I mean, pure Snake Eyes, but like Snake Eye, Azamina, Fiendsmith kind of stuff. The Fire King deck ended up being the most successful in terms of conversion rate because they did go two in top eight, one in top four, and then ended up winning the entire thing. Landon Oliver, congratulations, with this list, which honestly looks pretty damn clean for an early format Fire King Snake Eye Azamina list. As you can see, the list that won the tournament did forego the Fiendsmith cards. Still boasting, I mean, I don't know how accurate this is, but even without the Fiendsmith cards, we're looking at a price stack of over of four digits, uh, which is something i think the reason why this deck was the most successful one why this deck won if i had to put it into my own words or if i had to guess is that this deck i think has better lines under fuvalos itself we've talked about it as well in a previous video but Moltrami fuvalos is going to be a format warping card that is going to decide how well your deck does in a format or in a tournament whether you like it or not this card is going to have a huge impact and how good a certain deck is or can play under Fuvalos is going to be very important to a deck's viability in the upcoming format. And now I think Fire King Snake Eyes has much better lines into this card than just pure Fire King, uh, a pure Snake Eye rather. If you're playing pure Snake Eyes, if your opponent drops the Fuvalos on you and you don't have an out to it, you're essentially limited to going something like Silhouat Rabbit or IP Mascarena and then passing with like maybe a Snake Eyes Divine Temple up, which is not terrible. You can win those games, but it's not necessarily a strong board. Whereas I think Fire 
Fire King. I mean, you can still set up that IP Mascarena in one summon, but you can still use your Fire King cards to get some other disruptions out there, right? Because if you go ahead and activate Island, destroy a fire, search Garunix and all that kind of stuff, you're never summoning from deck or extra deck unless you want to trigger the Olcanics. But all the Fire Kings summon from hand or graveyard. So you have to adjust your lines a little bit, but you can still do some things with it. So that's nice. And it also gets access to Dominus Impulse, which is another card that is worth highlighting from this tournament because we have four different decks in top four, a Fire King Snake Eye, a Sky Striker, a Tenpai, and a Labyrinth. All four lists were using Dominus Impulse. Ryan Yu is the only one to just side deck it, but everyone else was main decking three copies, right? And so that's another reason why we're foregoing the Fiendsmith cards in this Fire King deck because Dominus Impulse leaves you with the ability to use fire and dark, and that is all it takes, right? You don't need access to any light monsters if you don't play the Fiendsmith cards, and I think that's another huge bonus of not playing the Fiendsmith cards, right? It's hard to overstate how powerful of a card this card can be when you're going second as a hand trap. The ability to play three Imperm and three Impulse, which are two different hand traps that can't be like called by the grave or something like that, or don't play into talents and stuff like that is really, really powerful, which is another reason why I think we're not seeing as many talents in these decks. Another thing worth pointing out is we are only playing two copies of Sinful Spoils uh, Deception, which I think is surprising personally. This is a kind of card that I would have played three copies of because I feel like it's the kind of card that I would always want to open. It depends a little bit on what you predict other people to do, obviously, because this card, as powerful as it is, it is vulnerable to some hand traps that your deck normally isn't weak to. This card does play into Ghost Ogre. This card does play into Droll and Lockbird pretty badly. The winning list actually side decks three copies of Retaliating Sea as another way to counter the deception of the sinful spoils into the hallowed azamina which then you can retaliating see and that's pretty massive because the hallowed azamina actually doesn't even resolve right because it says send the sinful spoils card from your hand or field to the graveyard then special summon the revealed monster so i think you still have to send it just gets banished and then because you didn't send it to the graveyard successfully you don't get the special summon so it's a pretty hard counter to the hallowed azamina if you get hit with retaliating c snake eyes are definitely back in the tcg they have reclaimed the throne from Ubel, which is funny it is the first tournament so the interesting thing about this format i think is that it's going to take a while right this format is not one of those that's going to be over in like two or three weeks this is the same format that we will play for YCS Bologna, for example, I'm pretty sure, right? There's nothing new happening until YCS Bologna. That might sound like a bad thing, but I personally am a fan of that kind of thing. I do like when formats have some time to develop and unfold and you can like try certain things. If it works, great. And if it doesn't work, you try something else. Because right now it doesn't seem like anything is overly oppressive, right? Like you're looking at this top cut breakdown early on into the format. There's a lot of different decks that can perform and some of them I want to highlight obviously sky striker getting second place is in my opinion a good sign for a format because this is a deck that everyone thought was power crept a long time ago the ability to still get second place with a deck like that is phenomenal we have labyrinth over here in top four and it's not one of those like trap lab uh, that i played for example this is just normal furniture lab using rollback impulse not a single floodgate inside this deck looks so fun and this is another one of those decks that I was talking about recently in my Fuvalos video that just gets a huge boost from Fuvalos being in the format because the main advantage that this deck has is that it doesn't care about Fuvalos, right? And with most people playing Fuvalos in their main decks, these sort of decks can really thrive. They can really benefit from that. That's a cool thing to see that a deck that was almost nowhere in the previous format is now on the map again just because Fuvalos is such a huge uh, format warping card, right? Also, this deck obviously has access to Dominus Impulse, which is also really, really good. Centurion is another deck where Pack just said, yeah, let me pick up Centurion and bring it to the YCS and just don't care about Perulia or Fuvalos because Centurion has pretty good lines into both Fuvalos and Perulia where you just give your opponent a singular draw and that's fine, right? So what you see here is a deck that almost didn't change from last format, but just because Fuvalos exists, it just gets so much better because everyone is playing a card in their deck that doesn't even affect your deck much. Actually, not even main decking the Fuvalos as well, right? This is one of those lists that just side decks both Molcharmis. We have three Fuvalos and three Molcharmi Purulia, but the main deck is just literally normal Centurion that you could have played like this last format, but no one really did. I mean, some people didn't. 
but it wasn't very successful. And now you've got players like Pack picking up the deck because it's so tempting to play a deck that doesn't lose to Fuvalos, right? This is looking like Fuvalos is having some positive impacts on the game because Ubel, the deck that was making the most broken boards, you have a total of three Ubel in top 32. Not because the deck got any weaker, but because Fuvalos entered the game and some other decks got support, right? There are more. There might be more because this page has seven unknown decks. Maybe there's a couple more Ubels, but it's definitely not as strong as some other decks in top cut, right? It definitely got weaker from last format. That's the main point. Whether it's three, four, five, because we've got some unknowns there, it's fine. It's whatever. Overall, Uvalos has definitely allowed some previously pretty rogue-ish decks to put up some really solid performances in this YCS. Sky Striker, Labyrinth, Centurion, Rescue Ace, a bunch of decks that are here because they're good against Fuvalos and Ubel on the downswing, which was the most powerful and most broken deck before this set, not because it got weaker, but because Fuvalos makes it a lot harder to actually consistently combo, right? Like this sort of deck, right? You're playing a 46 card deck. They didn't even include cross out. You have four outs and 46 cards, which means sometimes you can out the Fuvalos, but the majority of the times you're not. Honestly, these results in my book, look good. If I'm comparing this to the previous YCS deck breakdown, maybe Rage of the Abyss is actually improving the format. Honestly, I'm a fan of the first look of Fuvalos, right? It doesn't feel like it's a main deck staple. We have people performing well without it, but it definitely does its job to keep certain decks in check and promote other decks, right? The only thing that's obviously something to be worried about is the fact that the Azamina cards allow you to summon an Omni Negate very, very early into your combo. That's like the one thing I don't like from this, but other than that, I'm honestly pretty stoked to see these results because it feels like the kind of format where you can perform with rogue decks obviously price point is um i'm excluding that from this discussion right i'm looking at this from a game balancing and health of the game kind of perspective obviously future developments is something that might change this but from a game balancing perspective i'm a fan of fuvalos which has obviously nothing to do with the price which is a different story that's the ycs niagara results pretty cool to see congratulations to landon for winning it who's been on a tear with snake eyes by the way qualified for the world championship with snake eyes as well and now won the ycs with it pretty cool to see once again shout outs to ryan Yu for performing and everyone else who made top cut that is the situation in the tcg that we're now gonna monitor for the next couple of weeks until ycs bologna we'll see how it develops but it's looking pretty cool so far in my opinion